What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith, co-owner of Recapture Values, alongside my talented wife, Bailey Smith. And hey, guys, we've been working, working, working for you guys. I've been kind of behind the scenes, which is why you haven't been seeing me. But trust me, I've been working for you guys. We're getting the magic. I'm the magic man. I've been doing all the <laughs> social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. You know what I mean? I've been working for you guys. But yes. A lot of big things are coming, and we are happy that you are watching these videos. We hope these videos help you guys. And We're going to be putting out new videos every Tuesday, and we're going to call it Teach It Tuesday. So cool. be prepared to learn. Yeah. So whether you're a mama, a grandma, and any, any sort of family member making stuff for your little nieces and nephews, whatever, right. um, shop owners, we welcome you to watch our videos and learn we're just going to be going through our favorite patterns and showing you how we use them in our own shop and we hope you can benefit from them well enough of the introduction we hope you enjoy this video see y'all on the other side hey everybody it's bailey smith from recapture values and today's teach it tuesday we're going to be going over a very very adorable um leotard and this particular pattern designer is petite stitchery and co and they have a baby Juliet, they have a girl's Juliet, and they have a women's Juliet. So you can do some mommy and me action there and that would be really cute. And um, we'll link all of the patterns down below in our description. It should be on the right hand side of your screen. There'll be a downward like facing arrowhead. Click that and the description will pop out with all of our links and a whole bunch of good information there. Um, as well as our group and our info about our memberships that we have. Um, so to get into our Facebook group, you need to be a member of our YouTube channel um, a paid member so we have th four different tiers in membership so check that out super great perks in there and um, we'd love to have you be a part of the group um, but moving on to the pattern so this is the baby Juliet we are going to be doing the 18 month size today and we are going to be doing an elbow sleeve and we're going to be doing a fully lined which means there's not going to be a neck band although this pattern does come with a neckband option and it comes with elastic waist or elastic um, leg option and um, we are going to be doing the leg banded version or the banded leg version and we are going to be doing a fully lined neck so you don't have to attach a neck band and um, elbow sleeve is what we're going to be doing and again this cute little pattern comes with a whole bunch of different options it comes with the um, cuffs or the bands is what this pattern calls it um, the pieces are included in the pattern. So you get a leg band, which you've cut two of that. You get an arm band if you're doing a tank version and you want bands instead of fully lined. Um, you need to add an arm band. It comes with that pattern piece. Um, and it also comes with the, ne the full neck band. And so this pattern for, in particular is a um, high neck and a scooped back. And um, they do have an option to add snaps, but we're not gonna do the snapped version here. So to do this, like I said, we're doing the leotard with the banded leg, and there is a different um, cut here for the front and the back. There's a different part that you would cut for the leg. If you're um, eliminating the elastic, you're not doing elastic. It's kind of hard to come by nowadays. It's not, it's, it's getting better, so you can find elastic if you'd prefer doing elastic in your legs. The instructions will show you how to do that, but for today's purposes, we're just doing the banded leg. So you would cut at the banded leg um, thing. I think it's like a about a quarter inch out would be the elastic, so it just gives you a little bit more room to fold that elastic up into the pattern. But um, So do cut the banded leg for both the front and the back. You'll need a front and a back piece. You'll need your sleeve piece, and again, we're doing an elbow sleeve. And then we will need the banded leg piece. Um, and we're not doing snaps. If, if they do show a good um, snap tutorial in within the pattern, so you learn how to do snap placket if you need a snap placket. Um, but for this, we're not doing that. Um, they also have a cute little flutter you can add to your patterns. We're not doing that for this video, um, but we probably will in the future. Okay, so for this pattern, I'm just gonna use some good old double brushed poly spandex fabric, and we're gonna use some dark mauve fabric. And you can get dark mauve from Knit Pop. We will link our um, our link down below for Knit Pop. We absolutely love Knit Pop. They are amazing. If you've been watching our videos, you know how much we love Knit Pop. They're just amazing. And just beware, it's addicting. Okay. <laughs> so um, someone's requested that I cut the fabric in this video, so I'm gonna try my best to do that for you. So this is how I lay my fabric out. This is a huge ginormous cut of fabric here. So. 
bear with me while I get it folded out here. And so pretty much, this is about five yards of fabric here. This is how I do it. So I put a table over here to catch the big part. I make sure that I've just got one piece of fabric. And so if you see what I did here, this is a selvage because it rolls. If you could see it's rolling. So that's the selvage part. And then here's another selvage part. Okay, so that means that what would happen if you were to buy this piece of fabric in an actual store, this is how they would cut it. It would be cut, it would be folded, selvage to selvage like this. It would be folded like this, right? It would be folded like this, and then they would cut a 36 inch piece and that would be a yard of fabric. So that's how they cut their fabric. Um, so we've already got this. And I like to line it up against my cut mat here. I'm just using a, a self-healing cut mat. And my rotary cutter, a lot of people ask what our rotary cutter is. And this is Westcott Titanium. I believe it's actually discontinued. Um, but I hear a lot of good things about the Olaf brand. Olfa. I think it might be Olfa. <laughs> That's what it's called. Well, whatever. Olaf, I got frozen too on the brain. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our rotary cutter. There's some similar ones, like I said, to the um, Alpha brand or whatever. I don't know if I'm saying that correct. So yeah, whatever. Okay, so it's important to pay attention to your fabric. And this one doesn't tell you which way the stretch needs to go. What it does tell you is you're going to cut two on the fold for, line diver or for a line diversion. And we're doing the fully lined version. So you need two backs. And you need two front pieces cut out. And this is a fold here. This part right here, it does tell you it's a fold. So pretty much what you need to remember is when you're doing a garment, you need to know that the stretch needs to go around the garment. So that means our stretch, we need to cut this piece of uh, pattern piece on the stretch going this way, which means I'm gonna fold my fabric this way. And to find that would be to grab your little fabric here, little fabric, this is a ginormous piece of fabric, but Grab your fabric and you stretch. Okay, so that's pretty stretchy there. Okay, so let's stretch it the other way. Definitely not as stretchy. So that means our stretch is going this way. This is our grain line, which is opposite of the stretch. Some pattern pieces will tell you that, um, so you'll know. But just rule of thumb, the stretch, the most stretch needs to go around the garment to fit onto the body. Um, so that one doesn't really tell you, but that's what you need to do. So. I am going to go ahead and fold this piece of fabric over. Again, this is our selvage edge. I'm going to fold it just enough. That's probably enough. It's probably a big enough fold. And I hear people all the time also say that cutting on the fold apparently wastes fabric. But I've been doing this for a while and I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. So, here we go. Alright, so there's the back piece. I'm going to use my little pattern weights. Um, these are little washers, the biggest size washer we found at Home Depot. And then I taped it up with some washi tape. It's not the cutest thing, but it gets the job done. So, all right. And this one fits just, just barely right here. So there's a front and a back piece right here. So I am going to use my rotary cutter. And again, the stretch is going this way. This is on a fold. I folded my fabric over. And so what I like to do is I just like to go ahead and cut a line here and then I like to go ahead and cut a straight line down just to keep my cuts looking right so that when I start again when I use this fabric piece in a minute because we'll have to do another one of these um that's a straight edge and I can just fold it over okay and so now we're gonna go around the curves and I'm not pressing at all I just changed my blade so it's super easy to um do maybe I need to press a little bit harder <laughs> All right, and so we're just cutting our pieces out. And again, I don't think I mentioned this. Since we are doing a fully lined version, the neck band here from the front and the back also has a banded cut line. So if you're doing the fully a fully lined version, you would cut the first one, and the second one would be the band. So if you're adding a band, you'd cut it that second 
the smaller um, lot in there. Okay. Ooh, I'm gonna be really careful because I put these ones really close together. I'm gonna be really careful with the cu uh, curves here. All right. So that one's done. Let's go around this one. Just be really careful. Okay. And again, it may look like I'm putting a lot of pressure on this rotary cutter, but I'm really not. This is just the best grip um, for myself to hold my rotary cutter. Once you've done it for a while and you get, you know, a good handle on this, um, whichever, however your rotary cutter looks. All right. So now we have a front and a back and we have to do this again because this is a fully lined version. So that means you need to have a... a main piece and a lining piece and so for this particular one we're going to use the exact same fabric um so that's how it looks when you open it up just like that same thing with this back piece this is how it looks when you open it up all right so we're going to cut another one just like this speed over here all right We have the two pieces, we have a, a, what's that called? We have a main piece and a lining piece, which is the same fabric in our case, so we have those. So now we just have the sleeves and the leg bands to do. So I'm going to grab those. Like I said, this was going to be an elbow sleeve. All right, so we're doing the same thing. I'm pulling the exact same piece of fabric over, same edge I've been cutting on right here. And so I'm just going to fold it over. That's probably going to be two much because the sleeves are pretty small my, my straight cut is turned into a diagonal cut but whatever <laughs> we'll go with it okay so we need a mid sleeve which is this line i also like to my um sleeves since we do use reuse these patterns really often i like to fold my sleeves instead of cutting out three different versions of sleeves it's just what i do and this pattern piece doesn't tell you where the stretch needs to go across so again it needs to go around your arm so stretch is going to go this way so we're going to go ahead and do this right here i'm going to cut some more piece here and these sleeves are cut on the fold be really careful with these curves here all right, so there's one sleeve, one elbow sleeve. Okay. And then this pattern can actually be fully done on a serger. The only thing you would need to do is um, band your, you need to add like a tiny little um, cuff to the end of your sleeves since you can't hem them on a serger. Two sleeves, cut on the fold, and then our leg cuff. You know me, you know I like to cut on the fold. It just reduces the surface area for me to cut in a straight line because we all know how not great at straight lines we are. I mean, if you're perfect at cutting straight lines, go for it. But for me, I know my limits. <laughs> and so I'm gonna go ahead and fold this leg band in half. And again, you guessed it, the stretch needs to go around the longest part, which is around the leg. So the stretch is gonna go this way. We're gonna cut it on the same one we've got all we've been cutting on it i haven't changed the direction of my fabric at all okay so i'm pulling up all right there should do it okay so you need two leg cuffs and like i said if you're doing it like the pattern says you're going to leave this open and you're basically just going to cut you can cut two out or you can fold it over and cut obviously that's not a big enough fold piece but you cut all around the pieces and you get two pieces 
Or you can do it like I'm doing it, which is exactly like I do the leg bands or leg cuffs on a bummy, just like this. So I do a fold, and I'm not going to use the weight on this one. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Boobity boppity boop. Put a weight on this side because I can never get it right. All right, so there is one leg band right beside it. This is the fold, remember? Again, this is just personal preference. The pattern doesn't say to do that. This is just Bailey 101 here. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna cut this little piece off and we are done with this wad of fabric that I'm gonna have to fold later. <sighs> All right, let's grab all our pieces. Okie dokie. So we have a front piece and a back piece and a front piece and a back piece. And we have two leg cuffs and we have two sleeves. So what you do next is you're gonna get a front piece front piece um, but I was saying earlier this can be done fully on a serger um, the only thing that you may need to sew if you don't want to add a cuff to the end of your sleeves or you want to leave them raw I prefer not leaving them raw <laughs> you have to secure that seam um, if you're gonna do that and I just think it looks a little bit more professional if you either add a cuff to this like a small like almost like the armband or neck band um, to the bottom of this or, um, you know, fold it under and top stitch, and then that's your hem sleeve. That's what I like to do with my sewing machine if you have both a sewing machine and blah, 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 <laughs> a sewing machine and a serger. So this is the front piece, and it is facing up, right side facing up. And so now I'm gonna put the back piece right side facing down. So I'm matching the right sides together. And I'm basically just matching up my little side, there are shoulder seams here. And I'm, you're, uh, don't worry about these parts yet. So you're going to match up your shoulder seams with both pieces. So your main and your lining need to be matched up. I'm going to do the same thing. Facing up. Back piece facing down. And then we're going to go over to the serger and we are going to serge a, I don't believe this tells you. I typically do a one fourth seam allowance. That's just what I do. Right here, right here, right here, and right here. So we're gonna go do that. All right, so we're here at the serger. I use a uh, 1034D Brother serger. Um, I don't know if you can see my settings here. I changed them a little bit from my other video, so you may check that out. And then I also changed these up here. Um, well, I need to change them back. <laughs> Three and a half. Three and a half, and then four and a half, and four and a half. Yeah, four and a half. That's what I do. Um, just I found it works really good. So, um, like I said, we're gonna do the shoulder seams here, which we've already matched up. You can pin if you want to. Um, I typically don't just because it, this fabric sticks together kind of really good. But you still need to make sure it doesn't shift. Um, okay, so then you put it under your knife, and like I said, I do a one-fourth seam allowance. I'm honestly not sure what the pattern says, but this works for me, sizing-wise, so. Make sure your edges are lined up here. And then do the same thing with the lining one. Exact same thing, the lining and the main pieces are done the exact same way. And then you do the same thing. The last shoulder thing. Alright, so for these, we're just gonna kinda cut this, leave our tail a little um, enough because it's gonna get surged around here in a second. You'll see. All right, so now what you do is you're going to open up those pieces like this. So you see that this is our front piece and this is our back piece because the scoop back is in the back. So what I like to do, let me go ahead and turn this so you can see what I'm doing here. Look at all the lint and stuff on my <laughs> shirt. 
beautiful don't judge me i know if you wear a black shirt it looks like this too okay but um so i put the this is we're gonna call this one the main piece so i'm gonna put the main piece in my lap right side facing up so that means the little seam we just did on the shoulders is facing down we just open up the lining piece and you're gonna do the same thing but you're gonna put right side facing down. So you're put, matching your right sides together. So you wanna make sure that you're matching, we'll see, I just did that. <laughs> you're gonna make sure that you're matching the back with the back and the front with the front. Um, so you'll match up your shoulder seams here. Let me get some pins. I do do some pins with this, at least the shoulders. Um, so you match up your, sh your shoulder seams here and I put a pin And then match up this one. Just if you put pins in it and you're using a starter, just remember to take your pins out before you go over. Because if they go underneath this knife here, it'll it'll cut the needle in half and it could potentially send it flying. And that's not good. So what you're going to do now is this hole in the middle, you are essentially going to serge this entire oval part here. So... What I like to do, goodness, <laughs> let me move this back over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I like to do, I like to grab this part here, and then I like to kind of fold it back onto this part, and that's what I'm going to start on. So, I'm going to put it in here, underneath my knife, and I'm, of course, going to remove that pin, and I'm going to get started. Okay, so now that I've got at least a little bit of thread underneath the needle so that when I pull it a little bit, it's not gonna just pull out. Um, you just wanna make sure that your raw edges are matching up for your neckline. So you're sewing this neckline in a circle. And with the curved part, just pull it enough to where it straightens out. Or you can, if you wanna ride it around the curves, you can do that. But if you just pull it straight, it'll, it'll curve up when you're done. So we're to this next shoulder seam, take that pin out, and just keep going around. Again, I'm doing about a one-fourth seam allowance here, making sure my edges are matching up. Just keep on going. When I get back to this, I just go over it. And then I am going to cut my tail. And then what I like to do here lately is I like to kind of fidget with this a little bit just to unravel this part until you get to the seam part here. Well, of course it wouldn't be easy to do. Let's see. Just a little bit more. I got a knit picker, but I don't really like it. It wasn't easy. So um, I like to just pull that one kind of pulled a little too tight. I like to just pull my strings here and it knots up by itself when you do that you pull it tight enough Let's see here. my little fingers will do it okay so that's tight enough and you can test it by pulling the garment and if it pops open then it's not knotted and you need to work on the way you did it if you have a sewing machine of course you can surge or, or zigzag stitch over those parts but that works for me and it doesn't come unraveled um as you can see this is the um shoulder seam so it doesn't come unraveled all right so moving back over here so you can see what i'm doing all right so that's the curve and so here is the part that is important here so i've got it sitting in my lap and what i do is i'm going to grab one piece one side and then one side and I'm gonna put it in the neck hole. Yeah, like so. All right, and so because, man, this is what it's gonna look like. That's the back, and this is the front. Um, all right, so because we are adding sleeves, we're not going to do the burrito method. If you want to learn how to do the burrito method to make this a tank, a, uh, a lined, fully lined tank leotard, 
Um, you can watch our next Teach It Tuesdays video and we'll give you some pointers as to how we're going to do the same thing with the peplum. And so if you want to learn how to do a tank version of this, you can apply the same methods we're going to teach next week on a similar item to the leotard and learn how to do a fully lined tank. But today we're just doing sleeves. So to line the inside of this, we're going to hide the seams. So now that we've did this and we flipped it out and our seams on the shoulders are right side out, you're now going to grab this piece, this piece, you're going to pull them up. Okay. So you see, and what I'm going to do now is you have a front piece and a back piece on this side and you have a front piece and a back piece on this side because of the way we just grabbed it. So what you're going to do now to make sure that your seams are fully enclosed inside of this is now they are right sides together naturally if you do this correct they should be right sides together now um and so here's the neck the neck holes right here um it's it's inside the thing right now you won't be able to see it the neck holes in here um but yeah so then you're gonna line it up again so i just lined up my pieces here and here same thing here all right so pretty much what you get is a front and back here and a front and back here. So I have lined up right sides together. If you can see here, Oop. I have lined up right sides together. If you can see here, um, so this is the crotch of one of them right sides together. You don't do that one yet. Don't do the crotch seam yet. Um, I think you can. I think you can do the crotch seam. I just personally don't because it makes me nervous. I'm, I'm, my brain doesn't work very well with that. So I just do the side seams here. So you're going to do a side seam of one side of the leotard. Knock all our pins over. Okay. We follow the curves because this pattern is kind of curvy. Now that I'm thinking about it, this may have like a three eighths or half inch seam allowance, but it's whatever. Um, they kind of do um, give you the seam allowance in your cut when you cut it with the pattern. Um, so just cut that off to make it even. side done you can see that one side so then you're gonna flip that over and you're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side so there's the back I don't know if you guys can see that. okay you guys can't see it but I'm basically lining up right sides together I'll hold it up when I'm done so you can see Right sides together, again, exactly the same. Line your crotches up. <laughs> and then um, your side seams on both sides. So again, we're just gonna do the side seams on each side. This will all make sense in just a minute. side seam here This is one piece. This is the one of the lining or the main, whichever one you want it to be, and this is one of the lining or the main. So pretty much what you're gonna do now is fold one right side out. Same. 
basically all I'm doing now is lining up my shoulder seams. Alright, so the leotard. Um, and the only thing we have to do now is the crotch seam and then add the sleeves and the banded legs. So I'm going to go ahead and do the crotch seam here. Of course you would want it. Um, so basically what that was about, what we just did and the reason why it took like so long to do that is so that's the outside or the inside, whichever one, because that's the inside or the outside, whichever one you want to be. Uh, but once you pick one that you need to do your crotch seam. And again, like I said, there it's probably a way to um, do the crotch seam just like we did the other seams so that it's hidden. But you're going to see the leg band cuff anyway. So I don't, this seam I just do now, um, the crotch seam. So you're matching all your crotch seams together or all your crotch pieces together. Raw edges, of course. Um, so there's the two back pieces, a front, a main, and a lining. And then the same thing with the front pieces for the crotch is the main and the lining. Just make sure they line up and then lining them up with the back. So then you're going to surge right here on the crotch part. All right, and since we sew, we surged. That part, this means that this is gonna be the inside of the garment because of course you don't want that showing on the outside of the garment. So, what we're gonna do next is we can go ahead and add the leg bands. Um, so, we are gonna first turn the garment, oh wait, 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 okay. So, leg bands, right sides together, folded this way, and then like I do all my cuffs, I think it's called the hot ham method or something. Um, and so then you fold it this way, you get that and you're going to start on this folded edge underneath your serger. Make sure your raw edges are together. Make sure you're holding this tight. Same thing with the next one, right edge or right sides together. This way, then this way. Then get the fold. The folded edge in first just so it doesn't shift as much all right cut your tails now we got to quarter up our leg veins um, you can quarter or you can do halves i do halves just because it's, I, I, I find it easy if you're a beginner definitely quarter which means you make four equal points on your band and you make four equal points on your leg opening and then you pin them, pin the points together and then stretch just enough so that the raw edges match up as you go around. Um, so, I'll go ahead and quarter just to show you guys. So that's done. So now we're going to quarter. And so what I like to do is I like to take the seam that I did. And so the seam is my one is one point. And I go over here to the half and make a second point. And then I line the second point and the seam up like this. And then I make sure all my raw edges are together because you want to make one snip and cut both sides. So then I'm going to cut this side. This side. And now I have four points, including the seam. Same thing with this one. I'm going to do it a little quicker just because. Alright. Boom. Alright. So now we are going to flip this. This is inside out now because remember we did this crotch seam. So you're going to flip it like this. Flip it right side out. I like to put my cuffs, I like to apply my cuffs from the garment being right side out. It's just what I do. So we need to quarter the leg band or the leg openings now. So I'm going to use the seams here as one point, both seams. So we have the crotch seam and we have a side seam here. First, I'm going to make sure that these are laying flat together, the seams in the middle. All right, so to quarter, what you're gonna do, 
at least what I like to do, is go ahead and match up your seams here. Match up your crotch seam, your side seam, and then make two points here. They're not going to be extremely equal, but it will mimic the elastic um, that you're omitting to do the leg bands. It'll be a little bit more tight around the front of the leg and a little bit looser in the back. Um, that's just what I do. Again, preference. All right, four pins. So, that's the back leg opening, that's the front leg opening. So what we're gonna do, this is totally preference. You can put your seam from your cuff anywhere. You can put it on the crotch part, which a lot of people do, the crotch. You can put your seams on the crotch. You can put your seams on the side. I like to do that, it's just what I do. I'm gonna put it on the crotch this time just so you can have visual purposes. Um, some people put the seam on this back point. You can do whatever you wanna do. It's totally up to you. Just, you know, find find what works for you and just keep doing that so you have uniformity. Um, all right, so we're gonna do ours on the crotch seam here. So that's gonna be my first point is the seam. And so here I am putting it on the right side, the outside of the right side. <laughs> that's confusing. The right side of the garment. I'm putting the cuff right here and I'm matching up my raw edges. Alright, so I'm going to my next points and matching them up here. And those edges. And the final piece here, and then I'll show you what this looks like just in case you might be a little confused. Um, all right, so that is the cuff attached to the outside of the leg hole. So I like to start, and you're basically going to surge around this whole circle here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pin the other one to it. So that we, when we surge, we can just surge all in once. Both of them. All right. Got the other crotch seam here. Match up all your points. Of course, I didn't make this one. <laughs> I didn't make this point here. Make sure you make your points on both leg holes. <laughs> Unlike I just did. All right, easy peasy. So match it up to your next point here. Oh, the tediousness of sewing. But it's so worth it at the end when you're done. <laughs> All right, last point here, and then I'll hold it up so you can see what it looks like, just in case you may be a little confused right now. Um, so that's what I like to do. So my cuffs are added to the outside of the garment, raw edges together, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna surge the circle, full circle. And so I like to surge so now you have to remember, since this is a lined leotard, you have a main piece, or you have a lining piece, a main piece, and then you have your cuff, which is two raw edges as well. So you have four raw edges that you need to make sure you're keeping together here. So make sure they're together. I like to start right here, which is the back part of the leotard leg. And I like to put that underneath the knife here. Make sure I remove this first pin. 
So once I get it under the needle a little bit, that's when I make sure I move my fabric because sometimes if you don't put it under the needle and get enough underneath there, when you start pulling it a little bit, it'll jerk out from underneath here. And it gets a little frustrating when you're trying to get it, you know, done. So um, you're not gonna need to really stretch the back part at all. Just make sure your raw edges are lining up. Remember there's four, so watch out for that. Right, so we're at the side seam here. Now the front, you're gonna have to stretch just a tad, and all you're stretching is the leg cuff so that it lays flat onto the leg opening. Don't overstretch, you'll get a wavy seam. Stretch it just enough so that these raw edges line up. And then remove the pin, and then we're on our last piece here. Again, this is still the front, so you're going to have to stretch it just a tad, stretch that cuff just a tad, because the cuffs are naturally just a tiny bit smaller, especially since we didn't evenly do a quarter. It's going to have a little bit more stretch on the front. Open up to this part here, and basically you're just going to pull. You find the string that's going to pull. Oh, not that one. You can pull all of them, really, and see if they'll tug. But you tighten them, and they'll tighten like this. If you don't want to do that, you can knot them. It's totally okay, too. You can use knit picker and knit pick them. Um, but yeah, that's just an easy way to secure your seam here. Then you just cut your little tail off. And so that part's secure now. Um, if you don't have any, if you don't wanna do it like that, you can use your sewing machine if you've got one. But so that's a leg band added to the leotard. And again, you can top stitch this down if you want to, and top stitch would just mean you fold the surged edge down, and then you top stitch the seam down. So it doesn't like, flip up and down. That's all you would do. That's cosmetic. You can do it. I like to do it because it makes it look better, but we'll do that later maybe. Okay, so next C or next cuff. All right, here we go. Move the pin. We're doing the back here again. And remember I said it's probably not going to be needed to stretch at all. Just make sure your raw edges are matching up. here make sure your raw edges are matching up all right and we're getting to the point where all we're gonna have to do is the sleeves and maybe top stitch the leg bands down if you want to um, all right make sure your raw edges are matching up this one. I'm gonna just knot them. Mm -hmm. One more little knot here. And again, you can totally just cut them um, and zigzag stitch over them. Or if you have a little knit picker, that works too. This is what a knit picker looks like. Um, it's got this cool little thing on the side here that opens up and goes down. You stick it in, pull your tail through. Um, I just keep getting it stuck and it's not my favorite thing to use. I thought it was gonna be life changing, but I can't figure it out. <laughs> All right, so then there are the leg cuffs added to the leotard. That's the front and that is the back. My hands aren't big enough. That's the back. All right, so now we got our sleeves. And so for the sleeves, I like to turn the garment right side out. And we're gonna go over to the sewing machine to top stitch these down. I'll be right back and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I went to the sewing machine and pretty much just folded this. Um, this is the right side and I folded it wrong sides together and just top stitched the sleeve down. 
And so you're going to fold this. Again, the folded part is going to be wrong side. So you're going to fold your sleeve right sides together. And then I like to start here when I go to serge it. And again, like I said, if you don't have a sewing machine, you'll just need to add a tiny little armband cuff. It doesn't come in the pattern, um, but you can just measure it and, you know, add this to here. All right, so we're going to get started just a little bit enough to where the needle has, is in the fabric and is up. And then you're going to lift your foot, pull your string tight, and then go underneath your foot here and over underneath the knife. Put it back down. And then there's no need to secure this seam here. There's some weird, weird pieces that didn't get cut off there by the knife. Um, but <laughs> there's no need to secure that seam because it is solid. Solid seam there, a little bit of pulling from the thread, but whatever. Okay, so, and then I like to go ahead and snip this folded part here, the folded part of the shoulder. So we're the exact same thing with the other ones, right sides together, right sides together. So that's the folded edge is gonna be the one that you see right now because it's the inside of the garment. And so again, we're gonna start with the sleeves, put it underneath your knife, go just enough to where you see the needle. Go into the fabric and it's in the up position. Pull your strings and then go underneath the knife here. Let down your foot again and then keep on going. All right. Well, it's pretty perfect. See what it did there? It kind of already finished your tail there. So you don't have to worry about that coming undone. Um, and then we're going to snip this. All right, so then we're gonna need four pins. And what you're gonna do is pretty much like I do all the sleeves and anything that I do, it's called an inset sleeve. And what I like to do is go ahead and fold your sleeves right side out. The garment is gonna be inside out. Your sleeves are gonna be right side out. So go ahead and fold those right side out. All right, so here is the leotard, right, or wrong side out, inside out. So I am going to put my hand through the armhole. This is the front you're looking at here. Put my hand through the armhole. And I'm going to grab the sleeve. Here is the bottom part of the sleeve. Shoulder seam point that I snipped. I'm going to pull the sleeve through here. And remember the sleeve is right side out. And I'm going to match up my shoulder seam point to my actual shoulder seam here. Um, I like to just make sure that my seams are laying flat in my shoulder seam. Just makes the overall finish look a little better. And it's easier to sew over too when they're flat. So you're gonna pin your sleeve to your uh, shoulder seam. And then you're gonna grab the bottom part seam of your sleeve and match it up with your side seam here. And so when you're done, that is what the sleeve's gonna look like. That's the inside of the sleeve as you can see. And the sleeve is kind of inside the garment hanging out in here. So we're doing the exact same thing to the other side just to get it done so that when we start serging, we can go ahead and serge and be done. All right. Again, now since this is the back side of the thing, this you're just looking at the back here, putting my arm through the hole, grabbing the other sh uh, sleeve here, pulling it through, and then matching up my shoulder seam here. Nice up the bottom, the side seams with the sleeve seam here. All right, so essentially you're just gonna sew this circle, all raw edges together. So remember you have a main and a lining piece for your bodice, and then you have one piece for your um, sleeve. So you need to make sure all three edges are lining up. So what I like to do, I like to go over here and start. Um, and so I'm gonna start, this is the shoulder, or the side seam here. I'm gonna start right here on this curve. It's just, it's most comfortable for me. You can start wherever feels comfortable for you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and serge a little bit just to get it under the needle and make sure all three pieces, edges are lined up. Go 
to this top point, remove your pin, and then just make sure you fiddle with everything to make sure that all three edges remain lined up. Because if you don't, you'll, you'll be able to see that when you turn the garment right side out. We got the last little pin here underneath and so just keep going in a circle here all right so as you can see that is the circle of the sleeve we went in a circle so again just like we did all the other ones here um, I'm just gonna pull it make it tight Again, you can nitpick this and tuck your tail. You can zigzag stitch over it. You can knot this if you want to. Um, it's just whatever works for you, as long as you secure it, which means when you pull this, no little threads come undone. That's the thread that I just pulled and it knotted itself. So as long as you can pull on this and fiddle with it and no strings are coming out, it's secured. All right, so we're moving on to the next one. We're gonna go a little bit faster. Again, I'm going to make sure all the starting part here, all three pieces, the main, the lining, and the sleeve piece are all at raw edges lined up. Got a little bit enough to go underneath the needle here. Pull the pin out. And this sleeve should fit perfectly within this. Um, the sleeve should fit perfectly within the arm opening. There should be no need for stretching. This is more of a guiding, like guiding to make sure that your raw edges stay together. So, technically, this would be the ending. So, of course, how did I get there? <laughs> so, now we're going to flip the sleeves right side out. And then we're going to grab the crotch part and pull it right side out. And then you get a leotard. My stomach's growling. <laughs> I'm not even hungry. I don't understand. <laughs> But then you get the leotard and it's not laying right on me because it's me. <laughs> so that's the leotard. That's the front. There's our leg bands right here. Leg bands. And again, like I said, you can top stitch this down. All you would do is just make sure the seam here, you fold it up and then top stitch it down. Um, that's pretty much all you do. And then, uh, like I said, this pattern comes with a snap placket option. Um, there's instructions for how to do that. You do the bottom a little bit, a little bit differently um, just because um, you need to leave this open, of course. And you, you'd add your bands in the curve rather than a circle. Um, but I like to do it like this. It's really easy to step in and out of. Um, it's really stretchy. You step in and out of the hole just really cute all right so this is the leotard right here it's pretty much done again like I said you can top stitch if you want to it's not necessary it's really cosmetic um let's see we can lay it flat here it's super cute it's very stretchy um the leg cuffs allow for a um, little bit chunkier legs to fit in without the elastic cutting into the legs it's really comfortable still fits very similar um that's pretty much it so again this pattern comes with a whole bunch of cute little things it even comes with a skirt you can add on not to the actual leotard but like an actual pull-on skirt um a tutu skirt almost that you can add um has flutter sleeves if you want to do that you can do a fully lined tank version you could do armband tank you can take away the lining of this and do a, a neck band leg bands sleeves or armbands it's really it's Got a whole bunch of options so but this was the fully lined version elbow sleeve leg bands and it's it's really good for dancing really because it's fully lined and so it gives you the extra coverage and well, i just like the way it looks 
All right, so I hope you guys like this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like the video if, if you loved it, of course. And then um, subscribe to our channel. We put out a new video every Tuesday, and um, that's pretty much it. We'll see you guys next Tuesday.